Just over a week ago, Sarah van Heerden from Durban and Greg Locke from Cape Town partnered up and took on the Western Cape 50 Passes 1,000 mile ride. It's 1,623 kilometers long if you stick to the route, if there's no forced detours, and it's got climbing, very significant climbing of 23,300 odd meters vertical ascent. Um, it just got faster. The first inaugural time in December, ridden by yours truly and Becky Sands, was approximately 11 and a half days. Uh, Sarah and Greg have covered the distance significantly faster than that in seven days, 13 hours and 15 minutes approximately. So things are speeding up there. The racing snakes have come to the party finally, and it was good to watch. It was good to watch the dot racing across the Western Cape, or around the Western Cape, should we say. Um, it's the, the, the pair had a few issues, notably navigation issues. One garment didn't work um, properly and the other one's maps weren't entirely loaded correctly. So there were a few challenges navigation wise and caused a couple of hiccups, one or two detours just after Carletsdorp, um, about 10k between Carletsdorp and Mikey's Rafiv. One evening it was dark and going down a river valley, that's the time to take detours when you're going nice and fast down a hill, you're really enjoying yourself, you're not looking for the turn off on your Garmin um, and that was a 10 kilometer odd off the route sleepover um, and then back to the route the, that, that night and then near Neisner missing the right turn on the, on the nice smooth downhill through the Neisner forests. Um, to Komsapat and Khona Road. Uh, so there were two uh, mistakes, I guess you could call them key mistakes, and there were also two detours forced by flooding. There was a lot of water around, there had been a lot of rain. Fortunately, it didn't derail the trip um, entirely because some rivers in that part of the world, when they flood, they flood. Um, and But there was, well, it was flood damage at, at Montague Pass just after George, which has forced the closure of the pass for repairs. Um, so they needed to take the tar road Otaniqua Pass over the mountains and hook up over the mountains with the route to Otsun again. Uh, and then earlier in the Kamenasi River Valley, there was an unexpected uh, low-level river crossing which was flooding at the time. But fortunately, there was a farmer on hand to show them a mild detour. We've put those two detours on the blog site just for anybody that might ride the route. Um, and we'll add um, any such detours as we learn about them. Um, because yes, unfortunately, flooding can happen from time to time, and it seems with this climate change thing, it's uh, the weather has become more and more erratic, and storms have sometimes become more and more extreme. The so the detours aside, that um, Sarah told me took their distance ultimately to over one thousand seven hundred kilometers. That's uh, not too abnormal. One does find oneself doing a little bit of backtracking and off the route stuff uh, from time to time. So a 1,000 miler can be longer than what the route suggests it should be. But uh, it matters not. This is about the miler club and a miler, or a, i.e. a 1,000 miler is about riding a 1,000 miles. And um, Greg and Sarah pretty much did that. And they did that pretty fast, given the hilly nature of that Western Cape 1,000 miler route. Sarah was the one out there with Greg, so... Here's a video clip. Sarah can describe it in her own words. She'll probably do more justice to the trip than I will. Enjoy. Good evening, everyone. John asked me just to say a few words about our Western Cape Thousand Miler. As you can see, I decided not to do much with my appearance so you could see how the route wreaked havoc with the 60 year old. Sunburnt lips, sunburnt skin, hair, shocking but otherwise all good. This was an amazing ride, an amazing route, and one word of advice to anyone who's going to do it, respect the route. The minute you disrespect this ride, it's gonna bite you in the butt. Looking back, we could have planned better. We could have had two working garments, not one. I could have been anything but an incompetent navigator. Um, but having said all that, I came back with a full heart and a happy heart and realized once again what an incredible country we have. The route is grueling. I feel almost in some cases unrelenting, but wow, exceptional. So John, you did a superb job with this route 
And I hope many people experience it like we experienced it. We experienced unbelievable hospitality. We experienced the small town friendliness. And in our seven days, we absolutely loved every minute. Having said that, I do think six days is a very achievable target. And with all going right, that's probably what we should have done closer to. I do think the fast racing snakes like the Simon Rollers, it'll be interesting to see if they can do a four day because I do believe it is a far harder route than Joburg to Bloberg. So I'll be watching and anyone who needs some tips or advice or places to refuel or where to stay overnight, you're welcome to give a call. But well done, John, on an exceptional route and we really are privileged to have been able to do it. Thank you.